Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to explain and recap the recently released film The Tragedy of Macbeth. This film is based on William Shakespeare's best novel Macbeth. This film is hard to understand as Old English is quite difficult. But if you are accustomed to Shakespearean English, then you can certainly enjoy it. The film starts with the voices of three witches who were talking about a meeting with the Lord Macbeth, the Thane of Glamis. He was the general of King Duncan of Scotland. We see a wounded soldier approaching King Duncan and his son Malcolm. He informed them about the heroics of Macbeth and General Banquo. How they defeated the forces of the treacherous Macdenwald. Thane of Cotter. Duncan was very happy about this. He ordered his knight Ross to go and congratulate Macbeth. He bested the title Thane of Cotter over Macbeth. Macbeth and Banquo were walking along the beach. Then the three witches appeared in front of them. They prophesied their future. They told Macbeth that he would be titled Thane of Cotter. He would become the King of Scotland. Banquo was skeptical about this, he asked for his fortune. The witches told him that he would be happier than Macbeth, and his line of children would become kings. Both Macbeth and Bangkok are skeptical about this, and hence they took it lightly. Later Ross arrived at their camp, he informed Macbeth of his new title Thane of Cotter. Macbeth was surprised by this and was disturbed a bit. Rose beheaded Macdonald as ordered by King Duncan. Macbeth wrote a letter to his wife Lady Macbeth, narrated all the predictions of the witches. She was happy, anxious, and wondered what her husband's ambitions might be. She burnt that letter and threw it away. She had always desired to be a queen, hence she seemed happy. Macbeth and Banquo meet Duncan who hails their heroics. Later he announces Malcolm. His son, as the Prince of Cumberland. This announcement stuns Macbeth and angers him. As he thought, the kid was not worthy. The seeds of ambition that the witches planted in him started giving their results. Duncan makes plans to spend the evening at Macbeth's castle in his honor. Lady Macbeth was blinded by her ambition. She was convinced that the prophecy of the witches was true, and hence she started brainwashing Macbeth. C suggest the murder of Duncan at the castle tonight so that he can become the king. Macbeth was not sure at first, but due to her wife's pressure he agreed. At night, Macbeth set his plan in motion. He briefly speaks with Banquo, who was at his castle with his son Flence. After everyone was deep asleep Macbeth entered Duncan's chamber. With great hesitance, he stabs him in the throat. Later he quietly arrives at his room, where Lady Macbeth calms him down. He was still shaken. His hand was filled with blood, which now spills on Lady Macbeth's hands as well. Lady Macbeth cleared this bloody mess. The next morning Lord Macduff, Thane of Fife arrived at the castle with the nobleman named Lennox. He checks on Duncan's room, he was horrified. Macbeth does a drama of being in shock. He slashed the throats of King Duncan's two guards accusing them of murder. Last night Lady Macbeth gave them a wine which made them pass out. She dipped their hand in Duncan's blood to look like they had murdered the king in their drunkenness. For Lord Macduff and Ross, these all looked fishy as he wanted to interrogate those two guards. Nobody dared to question Macbeth as he was King Duncan's most trusted man. King Duncan's sons Malcolm and Denalbin fled to England and Ireland in fear of their lives. Macbeth was then crowned King of Scotland, as two heirs had just fled from the kingdom. After becoming the king, Macbeth's paranoia grew further. As the two sons of King Duncan were still alive, he thought that they might come back and acquire his kingship. According to the prophecy, the sons of Banquo were supposed to be kings in the future. Hence, Macbeth decided to kill them as well. Macbeth hires two mercenaries to kill Banquo and his son. Lady Macbeth begins to express her concern for her husband's declining sanity. Two mercenaries grabbed Banquo and his son in the field. They attacked them. Flence runs off into the field. Ross saw these two mercenaries killing Banquo. Later, he found Flence hiding in the woods. He hit him with an old man. 
Macbeth hosts a royal banquet after the mercenaries tell him that the Banquo has died. At the banquet, he saw the ghost of Banquo and a raven. He was horrified, he followed him. In his fear and anger, he started screaming while hallucinating. Lady Macbeth and the guests were in shock after seeing this. Later, Lady Macbeth cancelled the banquet and tried to calm down Macbeth. But Macbeth was blinded by his ambition, his greed for power. He was not in a mood to listen to any good advice. Later he decides to kill everyone who was King Duncan's loyalist. That included Ross and Lord Macduff. Macbeth's soldiers arrive at Macduff's house and they brutally kill his family, his wife, and children. Ross flew to England where Lord Macduff was already there with Malcolm. Rose informs Macduff of his family's demise. Lord Macduff was horrified and he vowed for revenge. Malcolm gathers an army of English soldiers. Lady Macbeth begins to feel guilt for her part in this whole scenario. Servants watch her as she sleepwalks at night in her guilt. She begins to speak to herself. She was always washing her hand as she was always hallucinating the blood on them. Her mental condition was deteriorating day by day. Soldiers inform Macbeth of the impending war with Melcom. Once again, Macbeth was paranoid. He summoned the three witches and asked them about his future. The three witches said you will die from a man who was born, not from a woman. You will die when the forest starts moving. Macbeth was relieved after hearing this, he thought no one could kill him. As everyone is born to a woman. Malcolm and his soldiers cut down branches to use as a disguise. They made their way to the castle. The servants told Macbeth about approaching armies. They thought as if the forest itself was moving. Lady Macbeth was standing on top of the stairs. It seemed she was not in her senses. As the army attacked the castle, Ross approached her. Later we see Lady Macbeth lying dead at the bottom of the stairs. Implying Ross pushed her. When Macbeth came to know about this, he barely moved. He was so obsessed with his throne that he forgot his wife. Lord Macduff and Macbeth started sword dueling. Macbeth was sure that he couldn't die as the witches said, he could be killed only by a man who was not born to a woman. But there was a catch. It didn't include birth by C-section. Lord Macduff's was a caesarean birth. In a single move Thane of Fife, Macduff decapitates Macbeth. Macbeth loses his head when he tries to pick up his crown. Later, Ross hands the crown to Malcolm, as he was the rightful owner of the crown. Later he picked up Flints and brought him back to the castle to fulfill the prophecy. Thus ends the film. This is a beautiful art film, its cinematography is amazing. The use of lights and shadows to convey deep emotions is brilliant. This play dramatizes concepts such as ambition, power, greed, deception, and treachery. In the beginning, Macbeth was a brave and loyal subject of King Duncan. But it is only after hearing the witch's prophecies that the seeds of ambition begin to grow in his mind. This unrestrained ambition and thirst for power made him commit the gruesome murders of the king and other nobles. Therefore, his ambition proves to be his fatal flaw. The concept of fate is another idea that is prevalent here. When the first prophecy is proven true, he attempts to take his fate into his own hands by deciding to fulfill the next prophecy by himself. Thus paid the price. Overall, this is a great adaptation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe and like. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.